And how'd you feel after a night of sleep on it? The more I got away from it, I'm just like, as I left here yesterday, I'm like, I just, I can't put my finger on it. But something about the Joe Lacob portion of the Bob Myers press conference just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel right. No, nah, it didn't feel right at all and, in the moment, but it feels even more wrong now to me after the fact. Well, and but I couldn't figure out exactly why. Like, I, I, you know, a couple of awkward quips, but so what? Okay, so that was awkward. You know, oh, you're staying until June 30th. And Bob's like, whoop, uh, okay. Uh, but, but that's no big deal. But I'm like, why did this hit me in such a way? Because... Uh, Joe Lacob saying, for instance, we're going to win no matter what. I don't care what the rules are. Like, that's great. Don't you want an owner to say that? As a fan, don't you love when an owner says, like, all we beg for? Look what's going on in Oakland with the baseball team, for crying out loud. All we want is an owner. We will lose no matter what the rules say. (laughs) We will leave. No matter what. No matter what. I don't know if you've all noticed, but the deal they're trying to get in Nevada is like way worse than the deal that's on the table. At Which all. I mean, one? just unbelievable. I mean, they're like on their third different deal in Vegas. I, what a mess. I mean, honestly, the biggest mess in the history of sports and relocation. But anyway, we'll nah. save that for another. I, no, I mean, I, mm, why? What? What was worse? Irwindale. Uh, the Raiders uh, in that... They were going to move to that hole in the ground in Irwindale. I know. It was a bait and switch, and then they duped those people for $10 million finder's fee. There have been... I think this uh, is worse. Art Modell moving his team in the middle of the night. I know. I think this is worse. I mean, I, I don't want to get bogged down with what's worse. What's grosser know. than gross. Remember I've, those jokes? Yeah. Like, uh, don't you want to die quickly? Whenever we get there, don't you want it to be quick and painless? Oh, no. I want to be on a machine move, for years. Move, boy, A's... I want to be in hospice, Mark. A's, <laughs> That's been a hospitalization sensation. That's a bug. It, it, like, if you're going to move, move in the middle of the night. Don't, don't sit here and knife us in the back for eight years or whatever. I mean, it's been more than that. But, I mean, this process. Anyway, so, yeah, that's, that's totally off track. I, I just, the, the, the further I got away from it, I, I'm like, what, what, did, what bothered me about that? And I think the only way I can put it into one sentence is that, Bob Myers should be cherished, and Joe sort of struck the tone of, we made you. I mean, listen to this. You tell me. 888-957-9570. How did the Joe Lacob portion make you feel yesterday? I'm not going to sit here and tell you I understand it because I don't. It's not in me to do that. And I'm so competitive, and I know he is too. It's a really hard thing for me to understand why, but... It's really not for me to understand why. I just want him to be happy. Okay. That's great. That, that Yes, great. You're an owner. Be as competitive as possible. Don't have it in you to walk away from a successful thing. Wonderful. As a Warrior fan, bravo. Joe, keep going. Keep spending. Keep making a great product. You do you. That's awesome. But, man, doesn't that feel a little tone deaf in that room yesterday? A little tone deaf? Completely. Yeah. And I don't even know why he was there, honestly. That was Bob's press conference. That was Bob's moment to explain why Bob was leaving. I don't know why Joe Lacob felt the need to be in there to to say what? That he doesn't understand why Bob is leaving. He doesn't understand why. And he he was heavy on the why. <laughs> I don't understand why. And you found out this morning that Bob Myers is leaving, which I don't know if anybody believes that. And the fact that you're going to have Bob work out his contract for one more month, basically to what, show up in an empty office and not be in on the draft meetings and not be there for player development tryouts and whatnot. I mean, why would you have Bob continue to work for a job where he's not going to be there? He comes damn close to questioning his competitiveness. Listen to it again. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I understand it because I don't. It's not in me to do that. And I'm so competitive and I know he is too. It's a really hard thing for me to understand why, but it's really not for me to understand why. I just want him to be happy. I mean, he has to throw in the, I know he is too. It's like not just, in me to do that. It's not in me to do this because I'm so competitive. And so I is mean, he. I know he is too. Yeah, so is he. Whoa. Yeah. Dude, tap the brakes. The guy's walking away and he's a treasure. Right. That's that you know what I mean? You can Joe can think whatever Joe wants to think and Joe can say whatever he wants to say. But um <laughs> there? 
that day on the heels of room? of Bob, you know, talking to the media and getting emotional not once but twice to, in talking about his life as a fan, and he was a fan long before Joe Lacob even thought about buying the Golden State Warriors. Joe Lacob was a part of the Celtics organization when Bob was sitting in the upper deck at uh, Oracle over there in the East Bay. So Bob had his moment, and it had a certain tone, and then Joe slid in to the empty chair and had a completely different tone. It just felt to me like an unnecessary, out-of-place addendum to a press conference that was going a certain way. Yeah. Well, and, and you wonder what it means about where we're going next. I mean, here here's the quote that got everybody going. This is the one that really became uh, the, uh, the social media driver, if you will. We're going to win no matter what. I don't care what the rules are. We are going to figure out a way to do it. That's what good organizations do. They figure out a way to win the game. And our game is to win games and to win championships. You know, when we came here, this ownership group 13 years ago, we made a ridiculous proclamation about winning within five years. And of course, somehow we managed to do it, all of us, players and everybody involved. And uh, we've continued to win. And, and look, the rules will change in the game, but we'll continue to do that. We're going to work really hard to do it. And I think we have really smart people and we'll do it. Okay. Again, I, I think there's a huge section of the fan base that's like, inject that into my veins. Yes, the confidence. <laughs> right. That's fantastic. And, and, and I think that in a different time and space, that, that too would have been great. But it concerns me as a Warriors fan if somehow Joe, and it, it, more than concern, it explains yesterday, because everyone wanted to know why. Well, this explains it. Um, when you hear that, you're like, is Joe cruising around Chase Center under the idea that the Warriors are a dynasty because the, the people wearing... Collared shirts are smart. It, are we under that? Is anyone under that impression? Are you under that impression? Well, yeah. I you mean, are? he is far more important than Steph Curry. <laughs> and, oh, you know, okay. he's a better defender than Draymond Green. And he's had more 37 point third quarters than Clay Thompson would ever dream about. Duh, Mark. It's because of Joe Lacob. And he talks about his group and the ownership group. You know, when we came in 13 years ago and we had this proclamation and basically you got booed off the floor at the Mullen Retirement Ceremony because your proclamation was so nonsensical and then you proved us all wrong. And I apologize to you face-to-face, man-to-man, and man-to-woman as uh, she interjected famously during my apology. But you proved us all wrong. You've won four championships. You took $450 million and turned it into $5 billion, $6 billion whatever you could sell this thing for. You built Chase Center, the best arena in the world, arguably. You've done all that, Joe. You did it all yourself, right? Forget Steve Kerr, Bob Myers, the chef, as you said earlier, the guru. Which you, he gave you a two, I gave you a three. Yeah, I thought, that was, I thought it was great. Yeah. I agree. But to think that because you're Joe Lacob and you've done it once, that you can just rack it back and do it again, lickety-split, I think is not only arrogant, it's foolhardy. Yeah, and, and, and guess what? Maybe he proves us wrong again. But uh, uh, my thought is, especially if you're going to be a boss, like you have to know how your message is going to be received by employees. And so I know I'm not alone in this. And this is what I came to when I woke up as I tried to figure out why that didn't sit so well with me yesterday is that um, I think a lot of people sat down and wanted to listen to Bob Myers and they wanted to find out what he was going to say, why he's leaving and, and let him, because he does it better than anyone speak from the heart. And he said everything that he was going to say. And people were like, oh, okay, all right, that's where Bob's at. And then Joe walked in and started talking and a lot of people went, Oh, that's why he's leaving. Yeah. That right there. That's why he's leaving. And so I I would sit here and say, I want so badly to believe the message that we're being told at face value. And uh, I've, I've worked for the last 24 hours to try to believe it, and I, I just can't. I can't. Well, I believe it, but I think the underlying part of what motivated him to 
give the reasons that I think are justifiable, which is it's just time because I'm tired and I've had five straight years. We made it to the finals, which means I had no off season. This job is a grind and I do have a young family. All of those things are true, but I think that the underbelly underneath all of it is Joe Lacob is hard to work for. Joe Lacob is a very demanding win at all costs. And you heard him say that yesterday. You played the cut. We will win. I don't give a damn about the rules or about the CBA or about anything that you try to do to the big spending teams to keep us from winning. We're going to work around it and we will win. And the passion that Joe Lacob approaches this job and the competitiveness and the, I think you called it alpha plus the, uh, or type a type plus, a plus yeah. he's a type a plus plus. And because of all of that, it leads Bob because Bob can't come out and say, look, this guy is too demanding. He's too exacting. He's a real bear to work for. And yeah, we won. But guys, I can't, I don't want to do it. I can't do this because if Bob is going to get another job well, in another place, you can't show that level of, of quit and that level of weakness. And <laughs> Guru was right when he said, anytime anybody in, in the friend group says, I got to get home to the wife and kids, what are you going to say to that? That's it. Yeah, it, It's that's a freebie. It. Yeah. yeah, that's it. It is. It's a catch all. Um, did anyone ask Bob this? Why are you the only one who's tired? I know a bunch of people who have been there for a decade. When Steph Curry and Klay Thompson play basketball, it looks like the most exhausting thing I've ever seen in my life. They work out every minute of every day. But how many calls do they get from Joe Lacob on the daily? Well, that, that's his job, and theirs is theirs. And both, right. both of them are round-the-clock jobs. What about Steve Kerr? But see, your point is absolutely correct. Why is Bob the only one who is so exhausted before his 50th birthday? Well, because Bob is the one Joe calls. Right. Bob doesn't call Steph. I don't think he calls Steve. No. I think, I think when there's any issue with anyone, he calls Bob. And you can see it with the way Bob behaves in his job. Bob's there with a hose to put out every fire. He, it doesn't matter who it is. Wiggins is gone for two months. Draymond's sideways again. Whatever it is, Bob is there. Um, and, and that's the why he's the one who is more exhausted than everybody else. Right. I don't think that Joe calls Steve. I mean, he might call him occasionally, but he's probably not calling Steve and saying, hey, Steve, walk me through that third quarter inbounds play. Uh, I wasn't sure about, uh, you know, the, the, the methodology that, you know, talk me through that play call. That'd be amazing. Steve's be hanging amazing. up on him. <laughs> you know, now. Incredible if Lakeham had play ideas. And if, awesome. if he does, you know who he calls? He calls Bob. Bob. And he says, hey, Bob, do me a favor and ask Steve or ask Jamma or ask Kenny, or ask Bruce, you know, everything goes through Bob. And so if you're Steph or Draymond or Clay or any of the players, your only job is to play basketball, work on your body, be fit, go to training. It's not an easy job, but you're not getting grinded on by the owner like that. Rafi in San Jose, let's go out to you, 888-957-9570 on uh, Willard and Dibs. Hey, Rafi, thanks for calling. What are you doing? Oh, man, just um, driving on the 85 near Cupertino, just uh, heading home. But, you know, I don't have a problem with, uh, I don't know, a, a, anything, any type of problem with what Joe Lake have said or, or is expecting. None. Zero goose egg. I mean, dude, the guy, the guy comes out to win. That's all he cares about. And that's the way it is. And, yes, it's a grind, and everyone's grind is a little different. And uh, Bob did it really well for 10 years. And... Uh, time for him to do something else. I mean, the guy's tired. I mean, everyone runs at a little different level, and this guy ran at a very high level for 10 years. You got to give it to him, and now it's just time to move on. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, Rafi, uh, you, know. you know what? I, I want to say this in response to you, and, and, and I wonder how it came off the conversation we've been having for the last 45 minutes. I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it, as in, I. well, boy, I need to, oh, I need to make a call. I need to walk down there. I got a picket sign. I don't have a problem with it, but yesterday was a realization for many people. Yesterday was a realization because when things don't add up to the norm, uh, it's our nature to ask why. And, and, and so why did Bob leave? He's 48. All of the players who have made them a dynasty are still there. They're less than a year removed from a parade. 
And so everyone's been asking why. Why is there no new deal? Why is this still out there? Now suddenly it's why is Bob leaving? And Bob will tell you family, and I think that that, uh, indirectly that is absolutely the answer. Right. But what happened yesterday is Joe came out and talked, and a lot of us went, oh, oh, that's why. Right. That's why. Well, it's family, but it's the family to where... He is, you know, lying in bed at 3.17 in the morning, and he sees, man, man, the phone's going off, and it's it's Joe Lacob, and Bob's got to get out of bed. Hey, Joe, yeah, Bob, I, I had an idea about what to do with uh, with our second-round pick in the draft in 17 weeks. Do you have a minute? Sure, Joe, go ahead. Or it's, nee, nee, you know, the phone rings yeah. at 10.15. I want to talk about, uh, you know, what took place tonight in the post game, or let's talk about the G League, or let's talk about this, let's talk about that. I have some ideas. I have this. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Bob. Hey, Bob. It's kind of like when you're when your young kid first learns to talk, and it's like a nonstop, nonstop. You're getting peppered and peppered and peppered and peppered. It's like it's your job to answer these questions. Yep, absolutely, and it was a good job, and it got very well paid for it. It's hilarious to me. Maybe it's because it's sports. I love when people do this because we're getting this all over. A lot of social media, YouTube chat, love, love everything that you're saying. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, I mean, this is, this is business. This is big time. This is success. You go hard every day, every minute. This is how you do it. There's no time for everybody's feelings. Oh, that's not how you feel about your job. Is it? Well, I'm not making eight million, Mark. No, but that's not how anybody feels about that. I love when people do this. It's just business, man. It's just business. There's no time for everybody's feelings. You got to be hardcore. You got to be nose to the grindstone, twenty four seven. You don't think that when it comes to you, you get mad when you've been there for twenty years and you got passed over because you want them to hire from within. You'll tell everybody at the bar or the dinner table when you get home how your company has no human feeling won't you but you don't care when it's somebody else that's essentially what bob and and if any of us have ever listened to bob that's who he is if anybody is in the dictionary next to the words human touch i think you're gonna say feelings (laughs) that too i guess that's two words but anyway like bob myers so does it matter to him uh would you think if his boss was like dude you work 24 7 Period. 365. And that's the way it is, and that's the expectation. And oh, by the way, even after you quit, I'm going to make you work another month after that. Wow. Do you think Bob is like, cool, I'm I'm cool with that? You wouldn't be cool with that, all of you people who are telling us that we should be cool with that. Well, you'd be cool with it because you entered into it with both feet, and you entered into it under complete understanding that that is what the gig called for. It's not like he got the job thinking... This is eight to five, and I get an hour lunch, and I get the weekends off, and you know, you know, once Friday at five hits, my phone won't ring again till eight in the morning on Monday. He entered into this job knowing full well what it entailed. It was high paying, it was high stress, it was high volume, and you go through it, and you have unbelievable success. You drink champagne on Market Street, you smoke cigars, you're a champion, you're a legend, you eat for free in this town forever, and you get to a point where. It doesn't matter how much you're going to be paid. He was going to be getting about a 50% raise from $8 million to $12 million, or maybe even more. We don't know what the amount was going to yeah, be. Yeah, no idea. He was going to get a massive it was, raise. It was plenty. But even the raise he was going to get, Mark, wasn't enough to sway him to keep the gig. That tells you all you need to know about yeah. just how burned out he is. Yeah, and, and so, by the way, I, I, I have no issue with that. This is not, this is not pointing out some sort of a flaw this is a realization, in, in my opinion. I thought it was very evident yesterday why Bob is so tired. That's all. That's all. And, and, and if that's the way you all want it run, and that's the way it's going to be run, obviously, then great. I do think it's funny, though, how many of you just buy that, like, up oh, continuity, nothing's going to change. What's Steph's last press conference going to sound like? Well, it was amazing that I brought you in here, Steph, and... <laughs> um, this organization, we're going to win no matter what, so I don't know why you're retiring. I don't right. really understand it. I don't have that in me. How the hell are you all going to react then? I believe Bob matters. I believe Bob matters a lot. I think yesterday is a huge loss 
for this organization. So the beat goes on is not where I'm at today. That's just not where I'm at. Well, we'll see. And I, I think that it's a loss. And I don't know how huge it is. And I think only the future will determine how big of a loss this is. If Draymond decides to leave and says, yeah, I would have stayed if Bob was going to stay, but Bob's gone, so I'm gone. And then Clay says, geez, you know, I, I was going to opt in, but I want to play with Draymond. And Draymond left because Bob left. I'm out. And Steve says, well, this is going to be my last year because I can't imagine doing this for a long time without Bob. Then it becomes a huge loss. If nothing else changes and the beat does go on, the loss is mitigated by the success you have on the court anyway. As always. As right. always, right? The Giants go on a streak of, oh, we've, oh, they've won 9 of 11. And then everyone's like, wow, this Farhan guy actually doing a pretty good job. So sure, if they win, everything's going to be fine. Uh, I think we can all see the challenges related to that, though.